Alrighty, and we're back. Let's kill some dredge. Yeah. Uh, Ivor, I really shouldn't have him go first. I need to have somebody else go and like sort of tempt them in. I guess he's injured though. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go up here. Does it display what his injury? Oh no, I guess injury it displays is... it over the top here, where it, you can see that they're injured. But I think I would have to wait until oh. it's his turn to actually find out what it does. Just yeah. Does the injury change? I mean, I know that the. Uh, um, Severity of the injury changes how many days it takes to heal. Yes. But does the injury itself ever get worse? I don't know. That, yeah, is, a, okay. that is an excellent question. Yeah, I've never let it go on long enough nope. to, to find <laughs> out. Although maybe we'll find out since we're not going to be resting at all. So. God, we can only hope, right? All right, so I'm going to rain of arrows this space, which I don't actually know if that'll do anything because he'll still if, be adjacent to Eagle. Yeah, if you move Eagle back, I mean, if anything, you'll prevent Eagle from taking damage from that guy to the to the right. This guy, yeah, that, that's the that's the hope. Does it... Um, but he might go for um, Ivor either way. Yeah. 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 What? That is... That was unexpected. That is very oh. confusing. Oh! That's not really what I thought was going to happen there, but... I'm actually really curious okay. as to what the, uh, like, how the AI behaviors were programmed. I think it's just like they go after the weakest character all the time. And that does stop him in his tracks. I right? don't think so. Sometimes, I mean, proximity is certainly one element, right? Because yeah. if, if the toughest barrel is right in front of them, they're yep. like, well, oh, okay, well, this guy. But they sometimes will just go out of their way to go after your archers. Maybe it's like certain enemies. Like maybe it's only the stone singers that do it or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you know what? That probably is something that they could have scripted yeah. for every single battle sequence since nothing is random in this game. Yeah, it's all there there are no random encounters, which I like, frankly. I don't that's, have any problem with it. That actually just, is really oh, smart. Wait, just go down. Oh shit. Yeah. Right, that's okay. That's smart from a design perspective yeah. though. Um it's I mean it's counterintuitive to players, right? Because they may they don't see that this is what's happening. Yeah. Um but I don't think that's bad because it keeps the player on their toes. I agree. Um, I also don't think it's necessary to have a game with random encounters. I, I don't think that has a positive or negative effect. Uh, it depends. I think it's purely based on the game. Yeah. I think there's a right time and a right place for random encounters. And this game, I think they made the right decision by making none of them random. Yes. Um, okay, so this stone singer goes again here, which means I have an odd leaf attack in there. Can she kill him? Five damage. No. I mean, she could... This this is Rook that I'm looking at right now. Oh, how much... What's her health at? Uh, Udleaf's health right now is six his to his... shield is six. So which... she can deal one damage to him. If she can exert herself, uh, which she, she can. can... She has the exertion and she has the willpower. So then she'll, she'll be able to kill him. So then in that case, then I should focus my efforts on this guy, but I can't kill him. Can he exert himself? Oh, no, I'm out of willpower. And we don't have the horn. And we don't Damn. have the horn. Uh, well, we can at least prevent someone from taking maybe more than yeah, one I can damage. Prevent, I can prevent him from killing this guy, which is good. Okay, I mean, could be worse. So now I have to have Oddleaf come over here, and she is going to kill this guy. Get him! Get him! Yeah! Yeah! And then this guy is just going to take one. Stonewall is such a good ability. It is super good. What, what exactly does Stonewall do? Uh, it... Every hit that you take until your next turn comes around is reduced by three at level one, by four at level two, and by five at level three. Wow, yeah. I just thought that it, it uh, increased your armor value. No, you just sit there and just beast out hits. It directly wow. soaks damage, like it removes. So it's it's basically, um, it's it's like another layer of armor. That's exactly basically. what it is, yeah. It's a layer of armor that can't be broken by anything, which makes it amazing. That's, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use Rain of Arrows down now that he's down to one guy, and I'm going to use it right there because I suspect... It could go either way, really. Well, now he's just going to attack Ivor. Which is fine, but if he doesn't and he goes after uh, Rook or Oddleaf, then he'll just get fucked. That's I'm true. I'm fine if he goes after Ivor. Like, that's what Ivor's there for. Unless he's he kills, already injured. <laughs> unless he... Well, yeah, but he could increase the duration of his injuries. Bah. Oh, well, we, we have it either way, I think. It's early, and by the time Ivor's recovered from his injury, I'll have more Varl. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. And here we go. And we're caught. Got yeah. him. Yeah, there's no way. So 
Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Need help! <laughs> Somebody! Probably should have called for reinforcements before I was gonna get one-shotted by this puny human, but whatever. I always thought that when the dredge are doing the, their, like, summon thing, that they're just, like, shaking their <laughs> sword like this, like, trying to start a campfire. Like, if that's how your magic works, I guess. I, I, I love the dredge because they, they don't... They're not like a typical fantasy villain. Like, when you picture, like, hordes of things, you're like, oh, it's obviously, like, orcs or goblins or something horrible. And the dreads are just, like, mysterious. Right? They, they seem cool. like an entire race of, like, stone golems, except they're more than just that. They are. But you don't find out that they're more than that till later in the game. Right, exactly. At this point, we still think, oh, yeah, I'm like, oh, who made the dredge? Mm -hmm. Like, was it some mad wizard in his castle? Like, no, the dredge are people. They're people, too. Yup. Uh, the caravan is stretched out past the point of safety. They're spaced out so far, we can't see them. We've got to pull them together. Uh, what should we do? Should we rally them with a speech, keep a steady pace, slow the pace so everyone can catch up? All right. Yeah, we just keep a steady pace. Fuck anyone that falls behind. <laughs> yup, it's too dangerous <laughs> to slow down. Sorry, guys. Another fun fact, the reason that uh, the group decided that Nick and I would play the pragmatic playthrough is because apparently we are the closest to sociopaths in the group. They, accused, they directly <laughs> accused us of sociopathy, which isn't isn't necessarily accurate. It's just that I, I sometimes lack empathy for my fellow man. I I mean, I'm right there with you. I... Yeah. Fuck him, right? <laughs> <laughs> Far enough for We're just today. pragmatic people. Shreedvildeer? 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 Yeah, maybe that's a good thing that we're not trying to pronounce everything, or read everything, because we're going to hit those names and be I'm like... A little stronger on my Scandinavian names, but I, I there are some, like, vowel and consonant combinations that I just can't... Uh, Comprehend? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm right there with A you. lot of these, like, in-character decisions are... I don't know that the dialogue actually matters, and yet at the same time, I wonder what the sequel is going to incorporate from the original. You and I talked the other night about how it might have, like, New Game Plus content, like, mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. might just track all of your decisions, or they might try to do, like, a Mass Effect-style thing where you, like, like fill it in at the beginning. I, I think the that last option yeah. is a necessity, because either, what do players that have never played the first game do? Play the first game. But that you can't make that a requirement. You should. This this game is awesome. If, well, yeah, you should. <laughs> but from from an economical standpoint, it actually yeah. would be counterproductive to set yeah, it up that you're way. Right, because you got people that have to like buy their first game before they buy the second game, and anyone who's on a limited budget is all right. Fair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That and you oh, know you can zoom in during cutscenes. Whoa, I didn't know that either. Hey. Oh, that's actually awesome. That's pretty fucking cool. The other th consideration too is what if you lost your game files? Oh. And that happens a lot, right? Like, I played a lot of the Mass Effect games, and uh, I jumped from console to PC at one point, and yeah. I was like, well, now none of the decisions I made in my other playthroughs mean anything. Yep. So, it's it's <sighs> basically a failsafe to make sure that anyone can still enjoy it without having to go through an entire game Ooh. again. Oh, a man stumbles into camp. Can't find them. He manages through tears. Lost my son and daughter, both. Others come to care for him, and you wonder how things might have gone differently if you'd let the caravan catch up and fled from Skogar. Suck to suck, I oh, guess. Maybe if your children had been faster. Morales become poor. Morales for suckers. We're just gonna get ready to move on. We don't have time to examine all these stones. If you want to see what the stones do, check out uh, the Mother Teresa playthrough <laughs> with Rachel and Jen, because no doubt they're going to read everything. Oh, man. It's so cool. You know, this is going to be the main disadvantage of us playing the pragmatic playthrough, yeah, is maybe. that checking the godstones is single-handedly the most powerful thing you can do in this game. Without really? a doubt. Well, that is how you just do that, then. No. No? It's not pragmatic. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the reason it's it's useful is because that's how you get all of the very high-quality equipment. Ah, yeah, that's actually true. <laughs> but we don't know that because we know we're that. pragmatic. Yeah. If you let us join you, we'll show you a watering hole with enough animals to fill those supply wagons. Oh, fuck yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah, oh, you hell yeah. Us. Sure. Awesome. 12 fighters, <laughs> 5 renown, and 18 supplies. That's 8 days because we have 265 clansmen. Shit, that's too many people. Uh, one of the men get too drunk and end up splashing meat in a warrior's face. The instigator, uh, Raffensvarder, is tossed out. Oh. Rafsvarder. This guy is going to cause problems for the next, what, like three or four days? How do we get rid of him? Uh, let's see. How? What's the pragmatic way to handle a drunken asshole? Tie him up till he dries out. Coerce a public apology from him. Laugh off the scuffle. Encourage the others to let the issue drop. Laugh off the scuffle seems the simplest. 
All right, let's laugh off. Let's try and laugh off the scuffle. Yeah. All right, everyone gets to laughing and drinking. All right, we got some renown for that. You know, I don't think I've ever chosen that option before. Really? Have you just always like gone for punishment? I think I generally make him like force an apology out of him. Mm, I think he dies eventually if you keep like shitting on him enough times. <laughs> Like, he's like the town <laughs> drunk, and you're like, ah, oh, you gotta quit doing that, you gotta quit doing that, and then the last time it's like, alright, this is the last time, and then he just dies, it's really bad. Uh, alright, we are at a new small town, uh, let's see, heroes, we have 55 renown right now. Oh, let's spend some of this. Let's spend some, alright, so we're gonna promote Ivor, yes. <laughs> because you uh, have to. We're gonna get him an additional one of those, oh no, I'm gonna get him two additional armor. Bridges. Yeah, yeah, that's, much that's better. way, way better. Yeah. Okay, Eagle has no kills. Oh, right. oh yes. Oh, right. Oh, Rook. <laughs> uh, let's see. Rook, I'm just going to give him Rook strength, too. Just straight up make him ridiculous. Yeah, and then strong. I say we go straight to armor break after that. I agree. Um, Alet, I'm going to also do armor break and an exertion, so that way she can snap off four armor at a hit. And she can do that mm. four times, or three times, because she's got six willpower. Um, Alet becomes really strong in the late game, basically by allowing you to spend as much... Like, you can spend three, and then you can get her items that increase her exertion even more. Yeah, so that way you can good. just spend a lot. Or I could I could do this. Uh, that might be strange. Actually, I think that's good because she's probably likely to die early, so we might as well spend all of her willpower right away. Valid point. All right, that's everybody. We actually don't, we can't upgrade anymore. We still have 35 renown left, which means I can actually spend some at this town. It bothers me a little just a little that renown is your level up and also your let's spend money on supplies thing it, it does seem silly right a little. Um, but at the same time i think adding another value to the game that's specifically for trading um yeah. i think it would kind of break a lot of the balance and it would make it easier yeah there's no way to not make it easier by doing that that's valid all right so i have minus one on drawing aggro which might be good uh plus two armor break Ooh, what's the tortoise band do uh, the tourist band, plus two armor on rest. Oh, we're not going to rest, so... At least in battle... Mm, well, actually, plus two armor at rest in battle is really good. Who do I want to give the armor break to? Is it Ivor? Yes. Is Ivor the one who's got the... <laughs> yes, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. He's got six armor break now. He is ready to fuck he's up ready, some dredge. He's ready to fuck up some dredge. All right, let's, uh, ooh, let's talk to Eagle. There we go. Uh, how's the arm? He's practicing his sword swings. Oh, I'm great, or not great, considering everything that's, uh, I'm fine. <laughs> My arm's fine. It's, it's a strong shield. He's I the just... only character in the game with a metal shield. That's the other thing. Everybody else has wooden ones. I mean, it makes his ability make that much more sense. <laughs> yeah, it does. Gil. Okay, Gil. He looks like he's a very sarcastic person. Who, Gil? Yeah. Just like, oh, I'm great. I'm just practicing out here. I think he's more of just like he's... I've never seen a shield like that before. Yeah, I doubt there's many. My father made it. Solid metal, really heavy. Been practicing with it since I was a kid. Used to spend a lot of time getting used to lifting it. Pretty good with it now. It's the only thing my father's. And then the mother died. I find it strange, though, that a metal shield is that rare. I know that metal's probably scarce. Or not... If you're going to use metal, you're going to use it to make uh, swords. Shields in Viking culture were considered to be expendable. Um, the reason being is because they were a... In, and at the time this game appears to be set, which is anywhere from like 900 to like 1100, the Vikings were raiders, which means they were on ships a lot of the time. So if you had a metal shield, it would just, bloop, just sink straight to the bottom and you'd waste your equipment. So and instead, instead it, you make it out of wood, it's also a flotation device. There you go. And if it does huh. happen to sink, you don't even give a shit. You just get another one. Yeah, that's um, smart. I am just going to leave now. We're good. I'm going to try and keep Eagle out of harm's way. I think I remember how to do that. Hogan and Mogan... Many from the village wish to join you to Frostviller. Shut your mouth, Hogan! Uh-oh. This is gonna be trouble. What's going on? These bastards don't speak for us. They've been trying to divide the village since you got here. True. You can keep whoever wants to stay and die. The rest of us will go with the reasonable people. <laughs> I'll have you both gutted before I let half the village desert. A mob, an angry mob has appeared. You both know what will happen to the rest of us if the fields are abandoned. Nobody leaves. Uh, there won't <laughs> like... be anything to dredge once... Er, to... to <laughs> Tend once the dredge right. Dredge my ass! I don't know what the scam is this time, Hogan, but you got two choices. Get back to work or I'm finally putting you in the ground. Uh, Mogan, what do you say? I thought it was unfair that he only asked me. <laughs> Mogan draws his ass slowly. <laughs> I think I make a poor farmer. Mm, 
Ivor, let's make this a fair fight. What do you say? The pragmatic choice is here is, is obvious. These two men represent half the village. They're the only ones who have the sense to flee when the dredge are coming. Everybody else just wants to stay and die, and if we don't get involved, then these guys are just going to get cut down. It's true. It seems like a waste of perfectly good uh, fighter food. And hell if we care what happens to the village after we exactly. leave. Exactly. All right, so uh, go ahead and do that, and go ahead and do that. You know, unfortunately, I think Hogan and Mogan are some of the least useful characters in the game. They really are. They're such a cool character to, or gr gr uh, team of characters, but... They but, die so quickly. And their ability is really interesting, um, but I... Like, their ability is the only thing that makes them slightly useful. In this fight, they're actually really good because they're up against human archers, oh, but yeah. in the other fights, they're not as good. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Ivor... No, I'm going to take Eagle up. I think their ability is the only thing, though, that can get you more than one damage or more than one armor break on enemies with high armor. Um, or, well, more than one damage on enemies with high armor, because they hit three times, and yes. each hit counts as yeah, one attack. Yeah, that is actually um, a good point. And then, you know, it's all equally nice against enemies with high armor, because maybe you'll get more than one armor break on it. <laughs> Just broke seven armor off of him. <laughs> nice shield! <laughs> Oh, that was very satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna get over here and I'm just gonna fuck with this guy because... <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> hey! Charging across the field. Hey, you! All right, let's see. Where are you going with this? Ow. But I need that. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna bloody flail at you. Later on, Bloody Flail does get really good. In one oh, of my wow. playthroughs, I did upgrade them a long way, and it's it's just, it's a pretty strong ability. Did he actually get five hits off? He uh, he got four. Uh, and uh, well, there were there were some killer. that, uh, it, it was, it shot off like two ones at the same yeah. time. Yeah, it, it, it uh, hits either, um, it, it just happens randomly, like the yeah. timing isn't perfect. Okay, so maybe um, I wasn't totally right about that, but, hmm. Oh, they already brought down Oddleaf. That sucks. Well, she's not getting ranked up anytime soon. Nope. And this guy is... <laughs> He's like, Ivers over here like, Come on, fight back, little man. <laughs> <laughs> nice torso. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good times. I'm gonna stonewall it up and then have Rook just like run behind him. <laughs> Who's she attacking? Oh, oh Ivor. Great. <laughs> Bloody You've flam. made a poor choice. Three, yeah, four. Oh, okay. Yeah, they hit four times, and it, it randomly targets either HP or armor. Okay, um, so it, maybe that ability is a little bit more useful than I initially thought. It is, but the trouble is, on later period dredge, they've got like 15 armor and 10 health. Like, what are they going to do? Yeah, and basically they can only take one hit from those yeah. ge dredge, generally. The answer is, they're not going to do shit. All right, they're so they're good, like, pick this guy one hit wonders in those battles, I yeah. think. You, they get one good, like softening up hit and then they're out of it which kind of sucks because then you're you're down a fighter you know yeah exactly um, and then they're injured until they rest and i will kill this archer <laughs> <laughs> this was not a tough fight i always kind of feel bad beating up on villagers but at the same time it's like all right you brought this on yourselves right like you could have just been okay with them leaving could have been cool with it but instead instead you had to make me cut you down it's all right these guys weren't the ones that were going to follow us anyway so that's a valid point they're all expendable I don't, I don't know. Well, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, I want to use his Mark Prey ability just in case. The one nice thing about Mark Prey is that you do one armor damage before the rest of your allies attack. That is a good point. I think that's the one redeeming factor about it. Of course, if you're attacking enemies with high armor, then... Eh. Yeah, it's less important, but still. And there we go. Bam! Fight. Cool. Well, that's it for this episode. We went a little bit long, but... Oh, did we? Oh, shit. Yeah, it's okay. The battle was fun. Yeah. So, we will see you guys in the next episode. Or in the archives. Or both of those. Yeah! Not very good with our outros. <laughs> and yet. And yet. And yet. We've been doing this a while. Okay, here we go. Uh, the brothers, join us, whatever. We'll see you in the archives. <laughs> <laughs>